Okay, good. So <clears throat> let us start with the study recap. What we have done. So I think, yeah, this is this one. Fine. So uh, we have seen stuff like yesterday, like uh, the comparison between row store, row store and column store. We want to use when, and uh, we saw like uh, uh, how the sidecar scenario was working, and after net we were seven point three one. The <coughs> mm, after net we were seven point three one. Uh, the BI or BW system started directly working on HANA system. Uh, and uh, then we saw uh, the evolution of HANA, how the HANA got evoluted uh, uh, step by step. All this stuff uh, we have seen yesterday. Also, we saw like when we are migrating from normal Oracle DB to HANA DB, then in that case, what we have to take care. So whatever the uh, native SQL is written in the existing code that we have to correct as per the HANA database native SQL. And then uh, 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 this is very, very important. This we must have to correct. Otherwise, it will give the dump. It will not work. This is not a showstopper. It will work, but it will not be useful. <clears throat> this syntax will not create any problem, but it will not be useful. And such kind of a statement where select order ID from this table where uh, the amount is less than 300 order by, you know, the order ID such kind of uh, if such kind of query is given over there, then in that case, uh, the value on which the comparison is given, then we have to add the order by clause for that particular, you know, uh, uh, particular field. So we have to put it over order by amount. Otherwise, if, if we just give this select statement, it may not work properly. OK, we must have to add and this one. Fine. So today we will learn some extra stuff. Let me add some new slides over here and I will write the date for today. And so it 24 November 2019. So just I will make it little large. This is for today's session. OK. And from here, let us start. So today we will see some uh, very important stuff like when we are going to migrate on HANA database, then what other things we have to take care about? What other things we have to take care about? But before that, uh, I think it would be it would be better to uh, discuss once about the HANA architecture, how the architecture of HANA has been defined uh, has been defined. So it will not take more time. Let us define. Now let us see quickly the architecture of HANA. So in this section, we will see the architecture of HANA. <coughs> architecture. Of. So here <coughs> just to remember that uh, HANA is not a merely database, it's an appliance, it's a platform which is a combination of hardware and software. It is not simply a database. So the HANA platform or HANA appliance is having multiple layer. It is having the multiple component. The very first component it is having the application server. The very first 
component it is having the application server. Uh, just one second. I'm adding Rahul to this call. Rahul Agarwal. Okay, fine. So Rahul has already joined now. Fine. We can go ahead and here, like architecture of HANA, the application server. In this application server, we will see that what are the stuff are there. So uh, the very first component of HANA is application server. And in this application server, like access engine is embedded in this application server. So just I'm writing the access engine. Access engine. This is nothing but it is known as extra small. This access means access means nothing but extra small or it is also known as extended services so it helps to extend the service that's why it is also known as you know access engine so in hana access engine is there and in hana itself when we have to develop the native application at that time what we can do at application server with the help of access engine you know we can uh, develop the native application in HANA itself. So fine. So all the logic or all the business logic, we can write it over here. There is no extra application server required. OK, so in HANA application server is already embedded. OK, and the wave server apart from application server, one wave server is also embedded over here. Wave server is also here. This helps this wave server helps to interact with the web application fine so here at application server uh, also there are multiple component for example uh, we can see that one of the component i'm just writing it over here one of the component is you know access classic it supports the access classics so one of the component is access classic actually there are two types of application server here one is access classic and now it is access advanced now it is access advanced so access advanced supports the various uh, you know uh, the languages like uh, uh, java dot node uh, node js all these kind of languages is supported by right? access advanced so if you want to do the programming in Node.js, you can do over here and the access advance will uh, take care of this thing. So access advance is there and then uh, SAP HANA repository is also here only. SAP HANA repository is also here. This will be used. This will be used uh, to store the source code access this SAP HANA repository. SAP HANA repository. This will be used to access the source code SAP HANA repository. Fine. So whatever the source code uh, we write in access classic or access advanced or at this application server that all source code can be stored here in SAP HANA repository. Now the another component is index server. This is actual DB. This index server is very, very important. This is another component of uh, HANA platform. This is known as index server, index server. This is actual DB. In fact, all the DB related work, all the DB related things, uh, it works, uh, it takes care of this is actual db this is the true hana db this is also known as true hana db so all kind of indexing uh, all kind of searching all kind of uh, 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 like uh, data definition language so it actually supports all kind of you know it supports the acid property whatever we are having the acid property in database so it supports 
your acid property and then you know uh, like uh, uh, searching suppose we are so uh, like uh, ddl dml and tcl so data definition language data manipulation language and data control language it supports this layer uh, supports the acid property the ddl dml and tcl ddl is nothing but uh, <coughs> you know when we uh, create any table like creating the table altering the table and dropping the table okay so it supports all these three statement dml is nothing but all the you know uh, like suppose we have to insert the record so insert update and delete delete so it supports all these three statements insert update and delete and tcl is nothing but transaction control language so transaction is nothing but like when you ha we have to complete any transaction we have to uh, uh, finish it with with the help of commit so either we have to use a commit or suppose if anything gets failed in that word uh, at that time we have to use the rollback so tcl consists of commit and rollback dml consists of insert update and delete or uh, modify also uh, i think modify there is no such statement called modify at the database level modify is at the abap layer okay so insert update delete and then acid uh, acid is nothing but it's a uh, like database property it must has to follow so i will discuss about this acid at the last of this session uh, like uh, what is the meaning of this acid acid is nothing but uh, it's a database property which consists of uh, a stands for atomicity c uh, stands for consistency i stands for isolation and d stands for durability so this we will see at the end of this session what uh, every terms stands for and then the next layer it is a name server it's a name server so what is the use of name server actually so name server it's nothing but actually when we are having the hana database it's not a single server hana database is a combination of multiple hana database server it's a having multiple server integrated with each other so suppose one request come on the hana database from application server then that request should run on which hana database because uh, suppose uh, suppose one uh, hana database server is very busy and at the same time another instance of the hana database server is just uh, uh, just uh, free that at the at that time this name server what it does that it routes that request to that another available instance of hana database server so this hana this name server uh, actually it routes it routes actually it routes the request to available available resources so it is actually it is actually it actually helps it actually helps uh, to improve the performance to improve it actually help to manage the resources to manage the resources and improve the performance fine so this is the name server uh, and now uh, one more component is there that component is also very important uh, that is known as the script server that component is known as a script server so what is a script server uh, just let us see over here a script server script server so a script server it is actually the combination of uh, pal predictive analysis library and uh, you know eml external machine library and again apl up apl is nothing but application programming library just let me note it down uh, the full form of this pal is predictive predictive application predictive analysis predictive analysis library and eml is external machine library this is 
external machine library and apl is click <coughs> apl is application programming library okay fine so what it is actually what is this script server so a script server is nothing but it just runs your programming language it just helps uh, uh, helps to run the programming language so for example like suppose you want to integrate your machine application with hana database so uh, you, you might be already knowing that hana database supports the internet of things hana database supports the machine learning hana database supports all such kind of uh, automated related of things sensor kind of related things it supports so sensor can be attached with the help of hana so that sensor uh, uh, that sensor with the help of that sensor uh, we can perform any automation over here so to perform the automation we have to use some programming language so that programming language to support we are having here a script server and a script server is here like pal uh, this is the combination of various library which is uh, uh, this uh, uh, here at a script server this has been made of uh, various library so this pal this is predictive analysis library so predictive analysis library is nothing but it supports the r language predictive this predictive analysis library is nothing but it uh, supports the r language and in r language we can develop any machine application and this eml external machine library so again like uh, this is also helpful to uh, create machine uh, kind of application or internet of things kind of application and again this application programming uh, library like you have to develop any business logic or something like that this application programming library is going to help you so overall uh, like with the help of all these things we can automate we can automate with the help of sensor we can automate the uh, process on the hana database fine so this is the script server and uh, then uh, there is one more layer uh, there is one more layer just let me uh, minimize it to put it over here so there is one more layer and that layer is actually known as that layer is known as the document store server that layer is known as document store server so uh, we will see about document store server what is the meaning of document store server why it is so important in fact all the component of hana database is very very important we should know at least so let me uh, put it over here the document store server document store server and the document store server it is used mainly for integration integration and it also consists of lm tools i will let you know what is lm tools and then tooling and provisioning so just let us write provisioning only data provisioning we can write data provisioning it, it is used for data provisioning so at the uh, document store server level at this particular component help us to integrate you know it helps us to integrate the hana application or your abap application with the uh, twitter facebook or like uh, whatever uh, outside uh, the social uh, social websites or you know google if you want to integrate any kind of uh, hana application with the help of this document store server this component is there with the help of this document store server we can integrate we can integrate twitter facebook etc or like this lm tool is nothing but this is mainly used to manage the life cycle management so update or you know like uh, uh, update kind of things or uh, some installation or if ha you have to consume uh, the any hana uh, any application then that 
this uh, LM tool, this uh, life cycle management tool is uh, used. So integration, this is nothing but to integrate. If you want to integrate Facebook or Twitter, it is helpful. This component is helpful. This LM tool, this is to manage the life cycle. Life cycle means uh, like in ABAP, uh, how we manage the life cycle. So in a map, we manage the life cycle with the help of transport transport. So we uh, develop our object in developer uh, system and we put it in a transport and then we move it into the quality system. Then again, we move into the production system by this way. We manage the life cycle in our ABAP. Similarly, in HANA, there is LM tools. So whatever we do the development, whatever uh, we update, whatever we do the new uh, 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 like uh, new things, whatever we create new things. So all these things uh, is taken care by LM tools. OK, so it, it to manage the life cycle to manage uh, or any such new installation or any new development. So for all these things, this LM tool is very, very important. Then data provisioning. Data provisioning is nothing but like suppose if you want to uh, uh, move your legacy data to the current server, like if we are having some existing uh, system in our company and if we want and if we want to move the existing data onto the new HANA database server. So at that time, this data uh, provisioning, it should support this data uh, uh, provisioning it should uh, uh, support to migrate the the legacy data uh, uh, to here on HANA database. So this is known as data provisioning. This data provisioning is nothing but it's a data migration. Data provisioning is nothing but it's a data migration from legacy system to uh, HANA database system. So it supports the data migration from legacy system to HANA database system, how it supports. So there are various tool like uh, uh, as we know SLT, there are uh, SLT, ETL, extract, transform, transform and load. There are various ETL tool with the help of which uh, uh, we can we can transfer the data from legacy system to HANA database system. So one of the very uh, popular tool is BODS business object data services. So with the help of this tool, uh, we can migrate the data from another system to the HANA database system. So BODS tool or whatever such kind of tool, whatever ETL tool are there. There are many ETL tool. So uh, with the help of uh, with the help of this data provisioning uh, component on this uh, layer on the document server layer, you know, uh, we can integrate such kind of ETL tool and we can move our data from another uh, legacy server to our new uh, HANA database system. So this was our overall architecture of uh, HANA platform or uh, HANA appliance. Uh, it's uh, not good to tell the HANA database because HANA database is a part of HANA appliance or platform. Uh, we will tell it uh, HANA appliance or platform. So our actual HANA database is this index server. Actually, this index server is our actual HANA database. Fine. So let's go here. Let's create one new slides and we will see some more stuff like in last class we were discussing when uh, but like if we move from legacy database to the new database a new database like HANA database, then uh, it will be a really system becomes very, very fast. But can you tell me like, is it really, uh, really the system gets very, very fast without doing anything? No, little performance will be there. We can get a little performance over there, but until and unless we write our code, we improve our code as per the HANA database, the performance cannot be gained in massive way. So for having so uh, to utilize the full database, we must have 
you know, to utilize the full database capacity of HANA database, we must have to follow some protocol and then only we can utilize the awesome power of HANA database. So we will see like what are those protocol which we are going to utilize to uh, uh, improve uh, the performance, to improve the performance and to utilize the power of HANA database. So the very first things first I will just let you know that uh, this is our application server. We already know that this is our application server where we are going to write our code and everything. Code will run uh, everything over here at application server only. Whenever we write code in AC38 and we activate that code that uh, code gets and sit over here in application server and when we run it runs at the application server only and then we are having the database so let's select this database so now we are having the hana database this is our hana db so this hana db what we can what it is there this hana db and application server are you know uh, integrated integrated with this network OK, this network is there with the help of this network. Both is integrated. So whenever any select query which have been written in this program, it has to push down into this HANA DB and the HANA DB gives the responses to the application server. So in order to optimize the performance, in order to optimize the performance, as we all know that HANA DB is having a uh, massive parallel processing capacity it's a very very fast it is there in the uh, ram database so what we have to do actually instead of running much of the business logic or much of the data processing logic over here in application server what we have to do we have to push the code down over here so we have to follow the technique of code push down and we have to push our code over here at the HANA DB so that it can run over HANA DB and we can get and we can gain the maximum performance out of HANA DB. So this technique is actually known as uh, code push down so that maximum code can be executed at HANA database. We have already discussed these things in detail in our previous uh, class. Just I'm doing this is a recap code push down earlier. It was, you know, uh, it was not code push down earlier. What we used to do, we used to get the data from HANA database and most of the logic we were performing at the application server. But now if you are having in your organization HANA database, what you can do, you can perform the maximum logic at HANA database and the uh, whatever the result set, you just perform all the business logic, you just perform all the aggregation like max, mean, uh, average, sum, count. So all kind of aggregation earlier, earlier days when HANA database was not there, we are not supposed to use the, you know, aggregation uh, functionality uh, at the database layer because it makes database slow at that time. But HANA database is now very, very fast. So now it is recommended or it is not only recommended, but it's necessary to perform all the aggregation kind of things, all the complex logic on the HANA database itself. So whatever the uh, statement, whatever the aggregation statement we have to perform over here. So so the meaning of that is since this is a network layer between the application server and HANA database layer, uh, database. So there is a network load when we transfer the data from application server to HANA database and again from database to uh, HANA database to application server, there becomes a network load. So how we can optimize the network load? If result set is a small, whatever we are going to get the data from here, if that data is a small, the network load can be 
uh, you know can be improved so suppose if we are going to use the aggregate function like sum and uh, our requirement from uh, customer side that we want to sum all the uh, uh, all the uh, when, like uh, uh, all the uh, kg all the uh, all the weight for the purchase order item in in one row uh, for a single purchase order item uh, for all the material i want to add the total uh, total quantity then what we will do we will do the sum aggregation and instead of getting all the records over here all the item related records we will sum those records and we will get the quantity in a single record and instead of getting you know 10 records we are just getting a single records at application server from hana database server so by this way we can minimize the result set we can keep the result set small so we will we will see some guidelines over here uh, in the same way so let me open this one and uh, we will see some gu guideline what the guideline we have to uh, follow and uh, let me open these slides i think it may be a little right here itself. So the first guideline, it is there like keep the result set, keep the result set small with the help of aggregate function, aggregate function, or if there is no uh, such uh, uh, unnecessary record if we don't want to get the unnecessary record we can just use the exit over here in exit functionality is there at the hana database so we can use the exit check such kind of you know uh, functionality we can use and we can keep our result set small okay fine and the second it's a uh, minimize the number of data transfers what is the second one minimize the number of data transfer so what actually i'm trying to say over here suppose if we are running a query in a loop suppose if we are running a query in a loop uh, at application server suppose if we are running a loop at <coughs> just write loop or end loop over here and at application server, you were writing some select single or something like uh, select single ma uh, matner from Mara. Okay, where some m tart is equal to some uh, like first time we are giving some m tart, uh, you know. Uh, uh, some some variable some variable we are giving over here lb m tart and this lb m tart value in each loop iteration is going to change okay that's why we are putting this uh, this select query inside this loop to get all kind of material type value then what will happen in this case in this loop if you were running this query many times this database will be heated so whenever uh, in first iteration application server has to establish the connection with this hana database it will take some time again with the second iteration your application server will establish the connection with this hana database again it will take some time in third iteration again it will establish the connection so it has to work establishing the connection and again uh, removing the connection if you are going to put the select query in a loop at application server level. So what you have to do in a single select call, get all the required data from here and whatever you have to do, do over here. So in a single select call, okay, in a single select call, get all the data from HANA database and get the data here. So you can minimize the network heat load. You can minimize the network heat. You don't have to. Uh, you know, you don't have to hit the, uh, you don't have to establish uh, the network every time with the database. So minimize the number of data transfer. So we can write it like this, minimize the number of 
data uh, transfer or we can also write like uh, minimize the number of data transfer or data connection okay data connection so that so that time can be saved for multiple data uh, multiple database connection connection so minimize the number of data transfer or minimize the database connection minimize the database hit connection okay so that time can be saved for multiple database uh, uh, can time time can be saved uh, for multiple database connection okay this fine hope you understood both the concept <clears throat> in first concept we have to keep the result set small in the second concept we have to establish the connection between application server and hana database server as much as small as much as minimum now the third uh, third protocol the third rule what we have to follow that minimize the search overhead on database use search the search intelligently so what you can do that you can use the db table either which is with column store or index is there in row store fine so here actually what i'm trying to say you can minimize the search overhead so how you can minimize the search overhead so you can use the binary search minimize the search overhead you can uh, or intelligently you can pick the column store or row store so suppose you are having you know large amount of data okay you are having suppose large amount of data and you are going to uh, and you are going to pick all the fields you are going to select a star okay so suppose if you are having column store don't use select a star okay if you are having column storage don't you select a star because it will uh, you know it will uh, it will uh, it will be a problem it will be a big problem because in column storage we have already discussed we have seen how the data is stored at hana database level and if we write if you are going to write the select star it will be really a big problem so we don't have to select all the column in case of column storage but if you are having the row storage and if your requirement is there to select all the uh, row then in row storage you can use the select star so you should know when you have to use the select star and when you have to use the you know select some field so that guideline i have given over here in these slides when we have to use the row storage when we have to use the column storage so we have to intelligently write the code minimize the search overhead okay minimize the serp search overhead intelligently write the code based upon le gently write the code okay based upon the column storage or row storage i have one question hello yeah 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 arun please ask me Uh, like in table we are assigning uh, the row or uh, column search okay uh, mm -hmm. last time it wrote okay so can we change it uh, later on suppose uh, uh, after uh, we want to some uh, do some yeah we can like change we can change but it will be a big uh, big task on the database suppose your uh, suppose if you go back over here and uh, one table is there we can check for mara table and we can go over here and this is uh, go to technical settings and here dba specific properties here you can see this is a column store if you want you can change to row store in case of in case of sap standard table you won't be able to do but suppose if, if you are having your own uh, customizing table there you can change to row store but again it will take lot of time because database has to do lot of work when you are going to change from column store to row store and vice versa database has to do lot of work it will take lot of time and 
Now, during that time, your database performance will be low. So you can obviously do, but it will be costly. Okay. Okay. Fine. But then, uh, if I feel enough, uh, we can uh, change this search. Okay. But yeah, we can it. change. Uh, uh, we can change, but it will be costly. You understood what I uh, told here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so but if you were going to change from column store to row store, it will take time. It will take time. It will be, uh, you know, extra overhead. So that's why it is recommended at the time of development itself. If you are not sure that it will be a column storage or row storage, simply give row storage. Don't give column storage. By default, SAP recommends to take the, you know, column store to utilize the full power of HANA database. But still, if we are not sure, we can select the row storage. Okay. Fine. So minimize the search over it. We have seen like uh, and another thing, uh, don't uh, overhead the DB call with the unnecessary call. So this is self understood. Uh, uh, we have already discussed this, like minimize the number of data transfer. So. Uh, in this itself, uh, we can think that we don't have to, you know, unnecessary call to database, uh, database. Uh, so uh, we can write it also. Sometimes what we do simply, uh, we make the unnecessary call. We put the loop uh, inside the loop. We put the select query so that uh, unnecessary call, unnecessary call, avoid unnecessary call to database. Word necessary call to database. database. So a word, a word select query in loop. Save it. Okay. So uh, I will just show you uh, how means how. Uh, we can write a bad code like <clears throat> with the help of means how we can avoid this unnecessary call. So we can take one real time example. OK, so for a vapor, they already know such kind of stuff, but still, you know, uh, <clears throat> still in real time, what we can do uh, for uh, who is not a vapor for that like Arun will it will be helpful for you, but for Rahul and Jaya, I think in the, in they are from a bad background, so it is uh, you know it will not be uh, that much helpful. It will not be a great learning for him, but of course for you it will be helpful. So what actually I'm trying to do? Suppose you are having some order table. So let me open one Excel to make you understand over here. And in this Excel, now suppose we are having a table, order table. Okay, we are having a table, order table, and in this order table, we are having order ID and then amount, and then we are having the product. Okay, this is an order table, and one another table we are having the product table, product table, and in this product table, we are having product ID product ID and uh, you know the category category we are having two fields product ID and category over here let us give some order one two three we can give the order and the amount we can give something like $120 uh, $130 or 140 dollar and the product we can give something like LP01 or anything LP01 uh, again LP02 and some product FZ01. Fine. The product ID LP01 product ID LP01. This is the meaning that it is under laptop category. So this is a kind of laptop LP01. LP02, it's again a laptop. 
and uh, if you go fz01 it's a freeze okay this is the product category now my requirement is get the total amount of orders for your category laptop now my requirement is get the total amount for you know uh, laptop laptop how much total laptop uh, how uh, how much amount of laptop has been totally sold okay so we have to find it out uh, the total money for the laptop sold okay so we can see for this laptop we are having two product id and for this product id this amount is there so answer will be 250 so we have to add it we have to add it so a uh, one way suppose if a very beginner programmer uh, 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 suppose a, uh, a fresher comes into our industry how they will write the code so they can write the code like this select a star from this product table okay this product table select a star from product table so this is our product table okay into let us say some internal table it underscore product so this is uh, they are getting select star and because you know because uh, uh, and they are uh, they are looking for only laptop category so we will write over here where category category is equal to laptop and after that they are just going to loop at you know lt underscore uh, it underscore product I have it over there. IT underscore product then can you tell me what it can be so loop at it underscore product into some work area w a underscore or ls underscore product ls underscore product and here inside the end loop so their requirement is actually they are just going to loop this it underscore product into ls underscore product and then uh then uh they they are just looping this select a star again they are writing select a star from uh, order table order into table lt underscore some temporary table they are just creating okay where product id where product underscore id should be equal to ls underscore you know ls underscore product ls underscore product hyphen the you know product id product underscore id okay and they are using here append lines of uh, lt underscore temp into uh, uh, into uh, here like uh, they have to get the order so let us take this it's the table lt underscore order okay and uh, the end loop is here fine so what actually they are doing what actually they are doing that first they are selecting all the uh, product which is having category laptop so in this this statement will select this uh, this uh, uh, records over here and once they get this these two records lp01 and lp02 they are just looping this record and putting the select query on this order id and for this lp01 whatever the order id and amount is there just putting in one lt underscore order uh, table and again for lp02 for this category whatever they are having uh, the the record they are just putting into this uh, lt underscore order table so by this way they are able to get these two records and now what they are going to do they are just putting the loop at this lt underscore order lt underscore order into uh, here also again work area wa underscore order and again end loop and they want to 
add this one. So uh, the amount uh, LV underscore sum we can write over here equal to LV underscore you know sum plus and here they have to give W underscore order uh, hyphen amount. So by this way they are going to sum total quantity and at the last they are just writing right LV underscore sum. They can display the output. So these many quotes they have to write if they are fresher. But some experienced person are there then what they will simply write. So all such kind of things can be done in one go. So what they will write over here, they will just simply put this select query. They will just get this uh, uh, select a star from product table into LT underscore product with category. So this is important. They will get this one. OK, and then after, you know, just they will write select uh, some and then they will write amount from you know uh, order table order table okay into some work area uh, into some internal table nt lt underscore uh, so select some here itself we can use the uh, here itself select some amount into some variable we will store sum from order table here into is not required. We actually looking for sum. So select some amount into LV underscore sum from order table and you know uh, for all entries. OK, for we have to write the for all entries. We have to use this for all entries. We already know what is for all entries for a wrapper. It's fine. I think for our own it will be a little difficult, but uh, we are taking the wrap class in that uh, we have already taught you about this for all entries. You can go to that video and we can uh, see like how we can use a for all entry. The same way I'm using over here. So select some into LV underscore some from order table for all entries in uh, yeah, LT underscore product uh, where you know where we have to give the product ID is equal to you know, product ID. Product ID should be equal to LT underscore product hyphen product ID. Product ID. So Select a star into this LT product. This is important. And after that, you no, know, after that, uh, this LT, this is actually IT product. So IT product and LT product, uh, actually, it should be IT product, not LT product. IT product, fine. So this single query will just give you, you know, the result, whatever we are getting in these many things. This is for from performance point of view, this is very, very bad. See loop and loop inside. We are giving the select star even in HANA database. It will be uh, it is not a good practice. It's a very, very bad practice in HANA database also because it has to establish every time network connection with the database. But here in a single database connection, you know, our work is going to be finished. OK, and uh, code also is less over here. We are writing the logic. We are imp we are executing the sum underscore amount uh, sum of the amount uh, logic at the database level. But here we are just doing the sum at application server itself. So this is not good. We are not supposed to do the sum at the application server when we are having the HANA database in backend. OK, we have to put all the aggregation mix uh, max main count sum all such kind of things we are supposed to do are the database layer. So this is one example. Just I'm going to copy it over here and put it in the slide for your reference. So it will be helpful. OK, I have put it over here and you can minimize it, uh, maximize it and you can. See if you want. So. Thing. 
copy and I will put paste especially something. No paste especially. Okay, let it be like this only. Fine, save it. And then uh, we have seen these things like what are the important guidelines which we have to take care so we have seen we have to keep the result set small we don't have to hit the database again and again so these two things are very very important and uh, the new things we will see over here that the important uh, languages in the database so this will be in this uh, uh, this is important to understand what are the dif uh, uh, different types of uh, languages in the database which supports. So important languages. Uh, at the database level. So there are. <clears throat> some languages like we know DDL language. This is. Uh, one type of language data definition language we have already seen this data definition language this time it out data definition language in this data definition language you know that create alter and drop comes create uh, alter drop comes so uh, the abapos how they use the data You know, they can create any kind of table over here. So they can go to SC11 and they can create this. Uh, sorry, they can create any kind of table. So this is nothing but create. This is nothing but create. So they can create from here. They can change. So this is nothing but alter. So this is the beauty of application server given by the SAP. So here at the application server itself, uh, we are having the user friendly functionality. We don't have to write the command like create. We don't have to write the command like alter. And we, you know, we don't have to write uh, uh, some select query and all those things. It's a change, create and delete. You can also delete from here. So here uh, SE11 is having all these three functionality to use the data definition language. OK, so Abapol use the data definition language with the help of SC11. OK. Otherwise, they will have to go at the database language and they have to write. But SAP has given DDL uh, data dictionary concept at application server layer. So this is very useful. Now, after DDL, we are having DML. DML is nothing but data manipulation language like insert, modify, and you know, delete. Insert, modify, and delete. So, suppose you have to insert some records in the existing database, you can use this insert. If you want to modify some records, this is data manipulation means you are modifying the record. Here, here, alter means you are modifying the definition of the uh, table definition and content are different. This is definition, you know, it definition, and here you are just modifying the content of the content of the database. So it's a data manipulation language actually. So it manipulates the content in the database. Okay, data manipulation manipulation language. It manipulate the content in the database. So insert, modify and delete is there. Fine. And there is one more TCL transaction control language here. Um, first, we have to understand about transactions. So actually transaction control language here. Uh, we are having the two important uh, uh, functionality, uh, two important syntax like commit and rollback. But to understand this commit and rollback, first we have to understand the transaction control language what actually it means transaction and action control language 
transaction control language so first let us understand what is transaction actually so transaction is nothing but you know transaction is nothing but it is having some certain properties it must has to follow then only it will be known as transaction otherwise it will be not considered as a transaction so transaction follows the acid property transaction followed the acid property so any transaction will be a valid transaction only when it will follow the acid property so acid property means uh, a stands for uh, a stands for atomicity atomicity means the meaning of atomicity or atomic means that when we run any transaction then it will be either completely successful okay or not successful it will be completely successful or failed so there will be only one result there should be only one result there must be only one result there not be any other result than this either it should be successful or it will be i know a uh, fail it should not be in pending state okay it must be in successful or uh, fail so there must be only one result or output either successful or fail then c c means this is the meaning c, meaning of c means consistency consistency so consistency means suppose <clears throat> you know suppose if we go to some uh, atm and we are going to get the uh, money today and like once the transaction gets you know completed uh, suppose i am going to withdraw some 1000 rupees from there and total i am having some 5000 in my account so after taking after withdrawing the 1000 it should leave our database in consistent state that means when i get the 1000 rupees from my uh, account the amount should be there 4000 and that 4000 should be in consistent state it 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 should be not like uh, when i am going to you know uh, get the data uh, get, get the amount 1000 rupees to today and tomorrow if i go there and then i can see over there that my amount balance is there only uh, 2000 rupees though it should be there 4000 it is 2000 only so it should not be like that it should not be inconsistent it should not be like inconsistent so like now uh, in consistency uh, also we can understand like uh, suppose you we are having uh, one table uh like uh, employee table and there is one option called gender there is one field called gender so what i am expecting for the database either to accept male or female and suppose if they are going to give some another value apart from male or female it should not accept it should be consistent so uh, uh, we 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 can achieve such kind of consistency with the help of many different technique so database should have the provision to provide the uh, to provide such kind of uh, you know consistency feature so our database must have this consistency so this is known as consistency and then you know uh, i i means isolation i means isolation so each transaction each transaction should be independent to each other each transaction each transaction should be independent of each other so it is not like that today uh, i am going to uh, withdraw uh, 500 rupees and suppose it got uh, failed and tomorrow also if i am going to you know having the sufficient balance it should not be like that it should tell that your first transaction got failed so uh, that's why that 
second transaction you know second transaction also will be failed so first time when i was withdrawing the money uh, at that time uh, sufficient uh, balance was not there so it got failed but when i put the money over there it should not tell that your uh, since first transaction got failed so this transaction will also fail it should not be like that if money is sufficient it uh, uh, we should be able to uh, get the you know money so there should be no dependency on the uh, any previous transaction all the transaction itself should be complete okay and then uh, one more thing is that durability and durability so the durability means durability means suppose uh, once suppose someone is booking the flight ticket okay and if they get the pop up once they successfully book the flight they get the pop up that their ticket is booked so once they get the confirmation message that their ticket is booked that means that means their ticket must be booked it should not be like after uh, 10 minutes or after 5 minutes they should get or after 2 days they should get the message like uh, their ticket was not successfully booked at that time itself at the time of booking the ticket they must get the consistent message they must get the durable message with which should be durable which should uh, on which we can believe that this is this message is durable this means whatever message we have received that means true uh, every time uh, uh, means uh, uh, flight ticket has been booked that means our flight ticket has been booked forever okay until and unless i cancel okay if it got uh, unsuccessful that means it ha it has been certainly unsuccessful it is there should not be any kind of any kind of doubt over there so every transaction must be durable every transaction must be durable so uh, once we get the successful message from uh from you know from uh, from flight booking okay or atm withdrawal uh, uh money withdrawal from atm so message from uh, once we get the successful message from flight booking system that means that means that each uh that is it must be booked that is it fine that is it must be booked forever so durability comes into the picture after commit statement okay durability comes into the picture after commit statement once we get the successful message from flight booking system after commit that <clears throat> that is it must be booked forever fine we can save it over here and we have seen the asset property atomicity consistency isolation and durability so this is a noise transaction control language and transaction can be controlled with the help of commit statement and roll back statements these are commit and roll back is known as you know uh, a tcl tcl okay tcl ddl dml uh, dml and tcl and i think there is one more language data control language dcl data control language so grant access or revoke grant access or revoke this comes under this data this is mainly for authorization purpose data control language this is mainly for authorization purpose so with the help of this grant access or revoke keyword Uh, 
So let us save it. So we understood the concept of uh, all this stuff. And uh, today we will stop our session here only. And if you have any doubt, you can discuss with me. Okay. And in next class, yeah. you have any doubt, Varun? Uh, but the doubt is uh, something different. So if you can, that is uh, more related to transfer request. So where uh, we can see this, all this TR, and uh, suppose if we configure something in a, uh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which so, TR you are talking about? Yeah, suppose we, if we do some uh, 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 in a system, okay. So is there any uh, T codes where I can see all this TR? TR? Means why you were talking about? Sorry? Yeah, transfer request. request. Transport request? Uh, we didn't talk about here transport request. I'm not getting your question. In what sense you were talking about transport request? In your side, First slide you are referring. Uh, you can uh, uh, complete which, this. Call. Uh, which for this is the first slide. Uh, so the last for last uh, did uh, this one, uh, You tell the to manage the life cycle. Right, right. Okay, okay. You okay, are so tra transport request. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. To understand. Uh, so to there any in a app in a app actually when we develop our uh, like in a app if you go over here if you develop any uh, if you uh, can you please mute yourself because some background noise is coming from your side okay, okay. yeah suppose if we're going to create this new program okay and if you click on this create button okay so just give some description taste executable save local object sorry i'm not supposed to save in a local object go back once again give some other name click on this create <clears throat> and here executable click on the save button and here if you give some package over there suppose you want to uh, manage its life cycle. So Z star F4. Just give if there is any package. We can use this package. And if you click on the save button, it will ask for a transport request. So this is your transport request. And with the help of this transport request, you know, if you go to SC09, SC09 over here, you will be able to see all the transport request over here. So Suppose if you want to send this program, whatever I have written this program, if I want to send this program from development server to quality server, okay, at that time we have to release this transport. We have to uh, put the cursor over here and we have to uh, 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 click over here, release directly and basis people has done the configuration. Like when we release over here where the transport should go. So for all this transport their destination is already determined and as per the dest destination given when we click on this release directly it will go to that particular server so first it will go to the quality and from quality it will go to production so this is you know known as life cycle management of any uh, sap object okay so I was talking about this. This life cycle management also is done with the help of solution manager. In some company, in solution manager, with the help of solution manager, they do the life cycle management. In some company, the basis people directly do uh, the life cycle management. Okay, there is a separate team. They do uh, the life cycle. Okay. So first of all, we have to be configure where we, uh, what is the destination location, and then after we will move. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to do anything. Basis will give us a transport request. We have to use that transport request, and we have to lock our changes over there. We don't have to do anything. Okay. Oh, 
we have to ask to the basis people please give me a transport request so that i can do my development over there so whenever i will write any code over there and i will save it will be saved in that particular transport request which we have selected initially okay so that transport request will be given by the basis people okay okay fine fine Uh, any other doubt varun any other doubt you have no. rahul hello i think he is not there yes pankaj yes i am there okay fine you have any doubt no okay fine thank you so let's meet in the uh, on next class on saturday <coughs> if you have any doubt we can discuss on the set address class okay varun okay okay fine thank you for attending the class okay good day bye bye